Hey, let's talk about games. Good morning, my friends. You're listening to Hydra. Today, we're going to be going through my Assassin Melee leveling build as well as endgame build, just the build I'm generally rocking at the moment. I think it's really good. I think it's really strong. I think it's very simple to play, but also very enjoyable and has plenty of reactionary abilities. You get to use your whole damn toolbar, which is more than I can say for a lot of range builds. So I'm really, really enjoying this. Now, this is going to be primarily focused around the build I'm rocking. However, you may find it even if you're a Crusader or if you're using another Assassin and melee build that some of these skill point investments may be of some use so to start things off let's go into the skill tree and see what we've invested here the first thing i invested into was actually a critical hit now this was just simply to get some damage up fairly quickly to do this we start off with one percent three percent and then we get another five percent if our suppression is green so this totals for eight percent in total um, assuming our suppression status is green but it's a nice amount of crit for three points invested that being said, your suppression will dip down fairly often, but if you make use of cover and a few of the other abilities we're going to get, your suppression won't dip that much. Then we're also going to pick up some other abilities. Yes, these are critical hit strength, but we also get another 2% for every enemy within melee range. As we're a melee, that's going to be quite handy. And we're also going to get a 1% bonus whenever we don't do a critical hit on a target, which is going to stack up until we get a critical hit. So it's, this one's really nice for dueling those sort of dreadnoughts, etc. Sentinels that are taking ages to kill. You'll just get a few more crits in there and it's it's handy moving on we have a few more critical hit strength abilities down here followed by another five percent yes it reduces your damage by five but the extra five percent crit i really do think is a good trade considering we have a few effects from critical hits in this build now finally we also have a one percent heal whenever we do a critical hit it's not a huge amount of health but it really does add up and it's handy to have so we've got a fair bit of crit to start off with then we go over to the close combat tree. The next thing I picked up was the melee critical hits applying a vulnerability, which will stack. And this is basically another 10% damage you'll be doing to that target. Once again, handy for those big targets and a going to take a while to take down i would then strongly recommend going all the way up here and along to getting an extra 50 hit points per melee kill it's very very handy for sustainability and if you're finding you're just taking a lot of damage this really does mitigate that quite well um, as well as that you've obviously got seven percent damage against single target and against three opponents at once so that's also very very handy and moving along on here you do get a little bit of extra critical hit yes you get some extra damage when you're low on life and you get even more damage after you've done a dodge roll 20 percent for three seconds it's not amazing but it adds up it's nice to have and very very useful for our build and also five percent critical hit chance for combo skills which will basically be your left click on most melee weapons so that's a close combat tree done which has been very very useful now something else i've been taking advantage of is the support tree where I have, yes, a little bit of focus resource cooldown, which is not really what I'm interested in, but every adrenaline point spending um, heals me for 0.5% of my maximum health. So you spend 20 adrenaline, you will gain 10% of your health. That is very, very good for the armor that I'm rocking at the moment. We'll go over that in just a moment, but it is essentially the hololithic armor, so I can spawn these girls quite often. They do a few things relating to my build. We'll talk about that in a mo, but they are very, very handy. Now we also go into the debuff tree and this is to have 5% critical strength for every debuff effect on the target and this relates to my weapon which will be putting needle toxins on the enemy target as well as vulnerability so this stacks up really really fast and you get some nice big crits. Obviously you don't want to go for this until you've got the crits. Movement speed I've gone into and this I would say go into last but really to chase down dealing critical hits reduces skill cooldowns uh, by 10% for skills with longer than one second etc. It's handy for the big boss jewels etc taking down those sentinels dreadnoughts and whatnot. It is very very useful. Um, it will just mean that you can spam your armor ability more often. You can just spam everything a little bit quicker. Uh, obviously, having a good critical hit chance is really, really handy here. Once you're rocking up at sort of the 40-50% crit, it, this really makes a big, big difference. If you have a movement-based ability on your sword or... Uh, whatever you're rocking in your your hands this can also be quite useful for getting you out of trouble the extra sort of cooldown reduction there's nine percent here for three points it's it's not really a biggie it's okay i can i can live without it now in the hit point tree we also have a couple of other interesting mechanics we have each successful dodge 
or dodge move regenerating 25% suppression, uh, sorry, 25 suppression. So as you can guess, I'm probably gonna go into a dodge move um, based build and a dodge based build because dodge for the assassin I actually think is quite useful, even though you do take a bit of spike damage every now and again, it is pretty good. Um, and this just basically makes sure you keep your suppression up. This on its own, I would really recommend. If you've got 40% dodge, thanks to some perks, which we'll go over in a moment, this is a lifesaver and you keep your suppression up so much faster and uh, it's just so much more efficient and you don't have to take so many breaks you don't have to have some pies and snacks in the middle of combat it's really really nice as well as that we've got one two ta-da we've got gaining hit points for every suppression point regained so every single attack that i dodge will give me 25 suppression that'll give me 2.5 health doesn't sound like a lot but if you're dodging half of the attacks that means half of the attacks are going to be healing you for 2.5 health it will add up mark my words it, it does make a difference when you see all of these numbers adding in we've got this we've got the heal coming in from the adrenaline spent on the arm ability the dodge you can have some life on hit as well we've got the life coming in from the close combat tree when we get the kills as well and it really adds up to give you that little bit of extra sustain now going over to the character sheet now we have to go through what what on earth is going on with this character so we've got our 20 percent critical hit chance a few other modifiers so this is more like 25 to 30 once you're actually fighting stuff 35 percent dodge we're resting at which is very very handy pretty much no damage reduction at all on this arm and that's the only bad thing you will take spike damage but hey you can normally live with it so what are we doing with this character we're pumping up survival to get the extra dodge bonus so these 16 points here give us an extra eight percent dodge which is super super handy it also gives us some health which is okay suppression resist bonus is all right too it's not the best thing in the world but i find this incredibly useful and i really want to work towards 10 percent dodge for five seconds after every kill i feel that that will complement this build no end and be in exceptionally useful and as well as that the 40 hit points bonus per kill will stack with the other giving us 90 hit points per kill which is a good chunk of our 3000 hit point pool as well as that we've got some other bits and bobs here which are quite handy restoring another 0.5 percent of your max hp and max suppression resist for every adrenaline point spent basically stacks when i whenever you spend one adrenaline you get even though it says, uh, no, no, it does say adrenaline. Ignore me. I'm thinking of the old tool tips. Basically, for every adrenaline, you get 1% of your health. 20 adrenaline, 20% of your health. Very, very handy. Now, perks. Very, very important for this build because these perks really make the build what it is. 1% dodge bonus for every 5% of the class resource bar present, up to 20%. So 20% dodge assuming you have full adrenaline how are you going to get full adrenaline you're going to go over to here two adrenaline for every incoming attack that deals damage to you but plus one if you dodge it that still pretty much means that you're full adrenaline more or less all the time it's exceptionally good those are the first two i would go for and then i would go for plus 50 percent melee damage for five seconds after performing a dodge roll or a dodge uh, move sorry but a dodge move is i'm going to call it a dodge roll because that way you really know what i'm talking about exceptionally good exceptionally handy and i think this is very very good it stacks with the other so we get 70 percent melee damage for five seconds or three seconds of the other move after doing a a roll so if you're about to do an execute a big attack we'll go through those in a moment this is super handy now let's go through the actual weapon and my choice and, and my explanation we're rocking the cathean sword which has um these needle toxins which are applying on pretty much most hits these build up debuff stacks and this gives us the extra critical chin hit chance percentage no it gives us critical damage percentage so that's exceptionally useful because you can get 10 stacks 10 stacks very very handy you also have an execute which is severance which is also ranged which is exceptionally useful which also stuns and shocks you can probably do some stuff with that to make it useful it's also armor breaking which you could probably spec into in the debuff tree you could definitely work with some of these abilities but i haven't the single target tree could even complement this quite well but what i'm doing with my build is I'm allowing my clones from the Hololithic armor to actually apply some of these poison stacks. For some reason, they actually apply debuffs. And then I can really spam the execute quite fast every 3.1 seconds, assuming I don't crit. If I crit, it's obviously a bit less. Exceptionally useful. We can also use Blade Dancer to apply the vulnerability stacks, which is the fourth ability. 
that is very useful too and it's also ranged and it also applies a dot and it also applies a needle toxin you could take advantage of the dot here with the debuff tree even by putting a few points into it and making the enemy deal 20 percent less damage to you because they're poisoned that could be very very handy and you might like it and you'll notice as well crimson path which is the hold the right click and just spam through the enemies it, it's really just trash clearing exceptionally good exceptionally useful does loads of damage and is is pretty damn amazing. In terms of what I'd like to spec on with this weapon, it would be Severance cooldown and it would probably be critical hit and maybe some life on hit or something like that. It would be exceptionally good if I had that role. That is pretty much the build I'm rocking at the moment, so we're we're basically trying to deal as many crits as we can, which are going to be applying those vulnerabilities. We're going to be using the execute ability to finish enemies off. We're constantly regening health by the use of summoning those clones via the armor ability to get us some life back. And that cooldown is then reset via the movement tree whenever we get a crit with the assassin. Sorry guys, on the crusader side you don't actually get access to that, I think. Um, but the focus spending is incredible. Sorry, adrenaline spending is very useful to keep that sustain up. And then whenever we're sustaining some um, extra resources with a passive dodge ability, that's also giving us suppression, which is also giving us health. It's all just making us a lot more tanky and survivable. I really, really like this build. I find it exceptionally enjoyable. Every single ability I has gets used, and you'll notice I'm using Revoid Shield too because it's amazing. If you were rocking some difficulty where you're fairly comfortable where you've got loads of dodge I would consider going for digital weapons because that will just apply critical hits to a silly degree for the inoculator as well I would probably suggest putting some crit on there um, as well as obviously some healing that would probably be my preference I don't think you'd need suppression regen but that combination would give you the ability to do really really reliable crits and I think would be a great investment guys I hope you find this useful I hope it's been something for you to think about getting your builds up and going going to be doing a leveling build video uh, later on or rather a leveling tips video to make sure you guys are getting up nice and fast managed to get myself up from level 18 to 39 yesterday which didn't actually take that long at all i reckon you could quite easily get 40 in a weekend if you are lucky with a couple of rolls guys i hope you've enjoyed the video i'll speak to you again soon take care